and poverty, saying that this never would have happened in more affluent neighborhoods. And this is actually the exact same thing that Hillary Clinton said at the end of the Democratic debate in her closing comments that this was about race, uh, this is about poverty. And of course, you know, this could be the case here in Miss Michigan, uh, but just like the issue of police brutality, they are now trying to divide this and make this a race class thing. Um, but this it has nothing to do with that. Just take a look at Sacramento. The city admitted to secretly testing a cancer-causing agent at its main water treatment plant in order to cut costs. The substances that were forming in the city's drinking water could cause cancer, birth defects, and even miscarriages. Red flags went up almost immediately for this, but here again, state officials completely ignored that, and instead they expanded this water treatment program, even though they knew that there was some issues there with it. And I've reported on residents in St. Louis who were told directly by the EPA to not worry about the nuclear material that was leaking out of this landfill. Uh, they said that these radioactive materials that were leaching into the groundwater were heading in an opposite direction from the city. Meanwhile, the residents had to point out to the EPA that this is the exact part of the underground water where they get their drinking water from. So it's going to be a huge problem in the future. And, you know, let's not forget about the EPA who destroyed an entire ecosystem there at the Animas River. And a lot of residents said that the EPA knew that this would happen if they tried to clean up the mine in such a way. Some people went as far as accusing the EPA of doing this on purpose with the intention of being able to set up a super fun site there. And, of course, city officials all across the country actually pay big bucks to treat the city's water with fluoride. And no, it's not the natural fluoride that is created in the environment. It's hydrofluorosilicic acid, which is a waste byproduct from phosphate fertilizer plants. So this has nothing to do with race or class. This is disgusting negligence of a system that wants to cut corners and doesn't care about the long-term devastating effects on your health. It's just more proof that you cannot trust the state to take care of you, look after your best interests, and the only thing that you can do that's truly safe and effective is filtering your own water. You guys have the exclusive for, which is a product called Deep Cleanse. And why I'm so excited about it is it's a unique formula, almost like the iodine crystals. We have two unique products that nobody in the world has. One of the most amazing ingredients in the world and it's called shilajit and it's actually known as blood of the mountain or rock sweat because thousands of years ago as a matter of fact this ingredient was only given to the elite of the elite thousands of years ago up in the himalayan mountains and in tibet and we wanted to put this in, in stuff for, for a couple years but we couldn't get an organic form right i mean so I, let's explain i mean this stuff's so good we couldn't put it out for years. Right. So I had to actually, it's kind of like the iodine crystals, finding a source deep in the earth that we could get the cleanest source available. But in Tibet and in Nepal and in the Himalayan mountains, thousands of years ago, they found, they watched these monkeys. And during the summer months, the monkeys would go up into the mountains. Now you're being racist against monkeys. And they would pick this black substance from the mountains. And so uh, in Russia, they actually, it, it, it grows in Russia in the mountains and in the Himalayas and only in the summer. And Chilajit is actually the decomposition of seven, up to 7,000 different medicinal herbs. So it decomposes, all these different herbs decompose in the Himalayan mountains and the volcanic soil up there. And what happens in the summertime... So it's almost like an oil up, from... Yes, it's high in fulvic acid, it's high in humic acid. Because they're, they're always claiming down. oil is really from decomposed animals and plants. There is some oil that is based from fossils, but most of it's really abiotic. But So, so this is a true fossil uh, source? I mean, explain it to me. It is, uh, it's really the decomposition, like I said, of over 7,000 different medicinal herbs and plants. And, it, and with the rocks and the pressure deep in the mountains, it freezes and... And during the summertime and the pressures build it up, it oozes out. It oozes out. So it literally oozes out of the mountain. It's like rock sap. It's like rock sap. It's black and it's highly nutritious. Uh, even in the 1980s, when the Olympic athletes in Russia were accused of being on steroids, they found out that they were actually been given shalajit because it, it works as an anabolic as well. 
and it builds muscles. It's a big dose in there. The second big main ingredient in there is a volcanic zeolite concentrate. And this, what this formula is designed to do, the shilajit and the zeolites have a real strong negative charge. All the metals and chemicals and PCBs and VOCs have positive charges. So these go in, they grab it, and then they safely eliminate it through the body so you can become healthy. I mean, the, this is an amazing formula. I wish I actually had it, but because this was an exclusive InfoWars Life product, you're the only one in the world that has this formula now. And, uh, you know, there is going to be a limited supply available when you sell out because you can only harvest this once a year. How do people take it? How is it recommended that this be done? Just a daily, daily dose? Yeah, daily dose. Uh, the instructions are on the label. You know, of course, I, I kind of modify it for each individual. It depends on what your lifestyle is. I mean, the, honestly, the best thing to do is for you to avoid all these chemicals and toxins in your environment and try to identify them and start slowly reducing them. But personally, I, I'm going to probably take it every day, every other day, and I'll probably go with about a dropper full to maybe two dropper fulls. Uh, and I, and I, live, I don't expose myself to any chemicals. InfoWarsLife.com. Please also support our local AM and FM affiliates, support their local sponsors, or become a sponsor and spread the word. Because these aren't just great products. This is how we fund this independent operation. We're not taxpayer-funded like MSNBC or NPR, and neither is your local station. So support them, folks. This is a war. <laughs> So many children have lead in their blood in Flint, Michigan. A federal emergency has been declared. We're going to be speaking with a resident of Flint, Michigan today, Richard Krause, and we're going to learn about how this has affected him as well as his family. Richard, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your story. So tell me a little bit about your experience. When did you first start to notice that something wasn't right? Well, it was the summer my uh, children we're coming down with uh, skin rashes, and um, my daughter was coming down with asthma. Mm. And we're a very healthy, athletic family who come from the mountains of Steamboat, Colorado. And we go to the doctors, and they really couldn't tell us what was going on. And, um, and then later in the fall, it comes out that our Flint water is contaminated. And these are some of the symptoms to look for itchy skin, loss of hair, asthma, all these different things that my family has uh, occurred. My youngest uh, grandson, who's just gonna be two this month, January 23rd, has a high level of lead content in his body now because of our great infrastructure of Flint that is crumbling as we speak. Mm. Um, there's been numerous other things. My my wife has epilepsy, and um, it's caused her problems. Um, right, because seizure. yeah, the the lead is is really it, damaging exactly. neurologically. Exactly. So all these things, and me and my uh, wife, the whole time we've lived in Flint for about five years now, have really only drank reverse osmosis water. Because when we come to this town, we realize that the infrastructure had leaks everywhere you drove around the city. There's a leak, water running down the street, a leak over here. And I used to be in infrastructure, and the EPA requires us that do underground work to report and immediately repair any leaks so no bacteria or contaminations can get into the lines. Well, the city of Flint is claiming that the reason we have lead it's because of our old houses here, which I agree, that is partial of the problem. Water has been tested with TTHMs and also has uh, given out numerous boil water notices. Um, and this is all since 2014, residents have been complaining of rashes, losses, um, and this is coming off uh, some documentation of the city here that I'm reading off. But yet our government we're two years into this now, and they just started realizing in September that there's a problem for two years now. Right. So how did you feel about that, knowing that there were several instances that we're learning about now where they uh, tried to 
defraud, I guess you would say, or debunk the findings of the pediatrician who was taking blood samples uh, from little kids because that's something that the state requires for Medicaid, Medicare, um, is to take those blood samples of children. So that's how she was able to really build a case for this. And yeah. then we learned that the city at first tried to tell her, well, we've taken our own water samples. That's not correct. Uh, how yes. infuriating was that to you? Oh, it's, it's just infuriating, you know, being a uh, patriot behind my country and then realizing that I'm living in a third world America. <laughs> they say don't drink the water in Mexico. Come on now. Right. We're living in America and we can't drink the water in one of the greatest industrial towns there was at one time. Absolutely. And that's one of the big issues is that it's just crumbling infrastructure. I mean, at least if you go to Mexico, you have those warnings and you know that you have the potential to get sick. Here, your state officials were coming out telling you everything's fine. You just need to boil the water. Um, meanwhile, one of the main chemicals that they were, weren't were able to stop, it's really awful if you inhale it. So, for instance, if you're taking yes. a nice hot shower in five degree weather, that's when it's incredibly damaging. So I'm hearing that there are a lot of businesses talk about a crumbling infrastructure. How is this affecting businesses in that area? Because I, I personally wouldn't want to go eat at a restaurant where I wasn't sure if they didn't have, you know, old lead pipes. Well, it's kind of amazing. You know, we have Flint Township. We have Grand Blank Township, which in our area are classified as the more upper areas of our area. We all know being in the infrastructure business, that the water is distributed amongst all those communities from Flint, and Flint even sells them the water. And when you go to the restaurants, they're like, oh, we don't have Flint city water, we have Flint township water. Like mm -hmm. that's any different. Right. But it's not. They're trying, the government here is trying to say that it is different. But right. if you put stuff <laughs> in the ground, you know that they're all connected from township to township. And they even told us that they sell water to those cities. So why aren't they being checked? Right. And I know a lot of this is is probably just trying to drive down the panic. But here now you have almost upwards of 7000 children who are being really they're going to be devastated with these side yes. effects of lead poisoning for decades. So how does it make you feel? Do you agree with Michael Moore or Hillary Clinton when they are saying that this is a race issue? This is a class issue. Do you agree with I don't that? agree that it's a race issue at all. I agree that it's an issue against all the people. The government, if if they cared about uh, individual race, well, I'm a white man and I'm drinking the water. Yeah. You know, um, my my skin color isn't. You know, I don't think it comes down to skin color. I think it comes down to why did our government, why did our city officials, our state officials, let our infrastructure become so decrepit that we're considered a third world city now. Right. Well, Detroit, I mean, they ha actually had to file bankruptcy. They're not able to, had to get some federal funding. And of course, like you said, this is one of the greatest cities in America, you know, the Americana there um, from Michigan. So talk to me, have you joined any of these lawsuits? Are you looking to join any of the lawsuits that have been filed recently? Yeah, well, I haven't joined any yet. I'm uh, currently looking into having my own separate lawsuit because the class action lawsuit isn't really going after what the problems were. They're just going after what lead problems there were when really there's all kinds of issues, not just the lead. There's the chlorination, there's the bacteria, there's the um, Legionnaire's disease. There's, you know, it's well, just on and on right now. But yeah. according to them, it's, you know, a simple little fix. Well, and that's, a, I think the reason why they're probably going with the lead poisoning is because that's a sure thing, done deal. Whereas every single uh, water municipality that has their water treated is getting the chlorine. Um, they're using different sort of coagulants to try and clean out the water, depending on where they're pulling the water from. And so that's what people need to understand is this is happening all across the country. You really never know what type of mixture you're getting with your water municipality. And people need to kind of understand that this is not just lo local to the Flint area. Now, we just have about a minute left. Are you happy with the response from the governor? Are you happy with what they're doing now? 
I'm not happy with any response at all because they keep bureaucracy moving in the air constantly of what they should do for the problem. The problem is simple. Dig up the old pipe and replace it. How are they going to pay for it? Well, that's exactly what Americans have to accept. We're broke. We 